Do you want to see how strong a half inch DeWalt power stud wedge bolt is when we pull it and shear? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highlight. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx, and welcome to Bolt Busters, where we try to break everything climbing bolt related in every possible scenario, just because we're curious. And today we're curious about the half inch power stud from DeWalt. This is a wedge bolt, this is stainless steel, and this is a quality product. The what we use on here for a hanger is Fix Hardware's 30 kilonewton 304 stainless steel hanger, which is about 295 retail on their website. Wedge bolts can be great in something hard like granite, but in something soft like sandstone or some layered rock, you would not want to put a wedge bolt in because it's only putting pressure on the sides here. Basically what you have is a cone built into the stud, threads on top, cone on bottom, and this sleeve on the bottom gets sucked down into the cone. Now the negative side, what I don't like about wedge bolts, is the tighter you make this, the higher the bolt goes. And sometimes when you put them in, it takes a while for it to engage. And what happens is this bolt sticking up that high, uh, kind of in the way of multiple carabiners if you have it sticking out like this. So a sleeve bolt is my preferred mechanical bolt, um, if it's not a temporary one, which would be the Fix Hardware's triplex bolt. But anyways, the reason a sleeve bolt works better in my mind is because the nut at the top stays flat all the time. Because this is a five piece powers bolt. What it is, is a threaded screw. And at the bottom of this thing is a nut. The nut is wedged. And as it goes, it gets sucked up, it's getting sucked into this sleeve that separates as you try to suck the nut up. And so what happens is the bolt itself is just spinning in place the whole time. That's how sleeve bolts work. Now back to our half inch wedge bolts. The first brake test, we put a 14 millimeter quick link on there and pulled and pulled and pulled until the hanger basically turned to taffy and it pulled the quick link through at 48.88 kilonewtons. The next week we decided to do another test because we do like to do three of everything and we got 54.94 before our hydraulic cylinder would not give us any more muscle. 20, 30, 32. Oh, holy. We maxed. It's the first time we discovered that our hydraulic cylinder was too small. And so we, the next week, got another one and we broke a fresh bolt at 60.92 kilonewtons. And that snapped the head off of our bolt. 10, 20, 30, yikes, 40, 50. So we've got three very different results here with the hanger breaking. The other one didn't break, but they both looked like they were about to go. And then the last one broke the bolt. So it's quite interesting that a 30 kilonewton hanger can keep up with such a strong bolt. I'm pretty happy with it. Pulled in shear. We will do another video on us pulling in tension straight out. But uh, it's quite a range to go from 68 to 60 kilonewtons. But that is basically dependent on the hanger more than the, uh, the bolt's performance. Depending on what rock you're doing, where you're trying to install this and what you're trying to accomplish, I believe this setup is pretty good. Just make sure you're not using zinc plated shit because it will rust over a shorter period of time. And don't put these things near the ocean. That requires a titanium bolt, so it'll last a long, long time. You can read all the stuff you need to to learn how to put in bolts at the Bolting Bible on slackademics.com. We're going to be rewriting the Bolting Bible with all of this new information we're getting and gathering from Bolt Busters and all the stuff that you guys, the audience, have given us feedback on. Because this is a collaborated effort to collect everyone's knowledge into one place so we have a great entertaining resource for people who want to learn how to bolt and bolt well. And that way we can keep our climbing and highlighting areas nicer 
longer. We post every week a bite-sized episode about three brake tests generally, and so make sure you like, follow, and subscribe on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube in order to catch them all. Cheers. <laughs>